Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday, and welcome to yet another episode of the Event Hustlers. My name is Liz King, and I'm very excited to be here with all of you again for another great episode of the Event Hustler Show. Um, I'm here today with a great industry friend, someone whose business I respect a lot. She was actually the wedding planner I hired for my own wedding, um, Daniela Grafman. Daniela, thank you so much for joining today. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me, Liz. Really excited to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I should say season right now, so it's crazy, but uh, I'll, I'll... <laughs> yes, I really, if I, if I planned better, we should have planned this for like the winter or something. So <laughs> it was a little slower for you, but you're never really it's slowed slower. down. Yeah. Um, well, I really want to thank you for taking the time, especially during your very busy season to chat with us. This is a show that I've designed really just to talk to people in the industry who are crushing it with their independent event businesses. And we also talk to other people who just kind of know industry trends and stuff. Um, but as I mentioned, you are someone that I've known for the past several years. I feel like this is going to seem weird to say, I guess, but I feel like in the industry, there are a lot of people who come and go. And there are just some people that when they come in the industry, they kind of like come in like firecracker and you kind of know they're here to do good work. And I felt that way with you ever since I met you, which I don't honestly even remember to the first time we met. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Thank, thank um, you. I know it's really sweet. Uh, but I agree. I feel like we met probably in like five different ways around the same time. Yeah. So it was just meant to be that we would have end up somehow knowing each other and working together. Yes. Um, so, but I've seen your work. I would love for you to just take a few minutes and kind of share what you do. And um, we'll talk about how you got started and everything afterwards. But what is it that Vision Event Code does? Yeah, absolutely. So we specialize, I'm an event planner, but we specialize in event coordination. So specifically for weddings, it's what a lot of people may may refer to as day of coordination, but we've kind of niche and wedding coordination is something that we get involved about, about two to three months before the actual wedding date, help people piece together all of the logistics, the nitty gritty of the management of the day that maybe isn't as glamorous as the flowers and design. And we've paralleled the same thing. We do it for well in helping clients that maybe don't have a budget to hire a planner from the beginning, but really piece together all of those logistics that have to do with a timeline and um, AV production and on-site registration and having the manpower to really produce an event versus the, the, the design and, and everything from selecting a venue and onwards. So that's really our, our specialty and our niche. Um, we've definitely evolved quite a bit, but that's our focus for right now. And how did you decide that that was the best niche for you? I know there are planners who kind of, like you said, work all the way from the beginning, and then there are the people who are just on the day of. How did you find this sweet spot for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So interestingly enough, we actually started an entertainment company, and we were focusing on DJ entertainment, and I inevitably became this middleman of a planner because I was dealing with our clients leading up to the event, and then I would show up on the day of to make sure that you know our DJ knew what the client wanted, and the client was happy and I would find myself doing things like bustling a bride's dress or bringing her a plate of food because for whatever reason it wasn't happening by someone else and all of a sudden all of our reviews were focused on the coordinator piece of it which was just something we were doing and as we kept getting it we saw that there was kind of a missing piece in the market and truthfully for me, my background is in nonprofit event planning and I'm a total logistics nerd. And so I, I love that whole piece of figuring out the timeline. And we realized, you know, if there's this missing link in the market, why not, and it's a strength of ours, why not go for it rather than trying to do what everyone else is doing and maybe something that we wouldn't have as much of a leg up around other people because they've been doing it for so long. and you know, our market tends to be a little saturated. So this was this was our way of standing out from the crowd. And especially now, I think with Instagram, truthfully, there's just such a need where people kind of want to plan their events on their own. They have so many resources and they see how people are doing things at their venue that where they really need the help is the, the part of it that isn't just selecting your vendors, but it's how do you make your team a team and 
where's that middle ground of, all right, I picked all my vendors, but now what do I do next? And what am I missing or what am I forgetting to do? So we're really just feeling a, a need in the market and it's been great. And so we just kept going with it and we kind of put DJ and entertainment stuff on the back burner a little bit. Um, but it's been really awesome and to see the growth of it and how much of a, of a need it is by the growth of our company. I, I think that's such a smart like middle area. Um, as you know, I wouldn't touch a wedding with a 10 foot pole because I, I always say I don't have the emotional capacity to plan weddings or to be involved in them at all. Um, and you probably saw with our own wedding, tried to keep it like as casual as possible. Oh, it, it was um, awesome because it was so you. I loved it. <laughs> it was so not a wedding. <laughs> but um, I have always wondered, honestly, how day of coordinators do it because it's just you're kind of handed everything and I just can't even imagine doing that for a corporate client, just like hoping it goes fine. You kind of have the benefit of having a few months before the day of to get your arms around what vendors they're working with and meet people and figure out where the holes are before you're on the day of and you have to make it all work. How has that experience been for you in terms of like, you know, you are at the point where they've already chosen their vendors. Does that typically work out or <laughs> how does how that whole process work for you typically? I know there's crazy stories on all the time, but. Yeah. It's always crazy story. That's for another time. Um, but it, that is probably the biggest challenge. And I think that's what generally people, um, whether you, you are an event planner or you're not kind of question in terms of how can you make this happen if you haven't been there from the beginning. And the first part of it is we realized that we needed more time, right? So it is part of it, like we have had a handful of weddings that we'll do within a month's time. But our our niche and right now and what we tell people is that we need two to three months in order to be able to do our job well and give you the experience that you're looking for. And that two to three months allows us to gather all the possible information of what they what our client has in their head mm -hmm. and what they've booked up to that point and to figure out what the missing gaps are. So we can talk to the vendors, create a relationship. The last thing that I ever want to do is walk into a wedding or any kind of event the day of the event and be telling a vendor what to do or like a, a supplier. And they're like, who are you? I've never met yeah. you. I've never heard of you. But, but that being said also, I think, you know, and you know this about me, but a lot of our industry friends are like, you're so involved, you know, I'm part of different associations. How do you have time for this? And honestly, I found that because we get involved later in the game with our clients, being involved in associations and knowing our industry and the market and who the players are out there outside of just the events has been a huge help to me because now I would say maybe one out of 10 events that we do, I don't know at least one to two of the vendors because I've built my network and I'm out there. So even if I've never worked with someone, at least we're walking into it with relationships to say, hey, like, I know you through X, Y, Z, or, hey, we've totally been at events together, so we know each other, and now we get the chance to work together. So we're kind of avoiding or eliminating that awkward, I don't know who you are, why are you telling me what to do? And, and just really making, I think, making the team a team, as opposed to me stepping in being like, I'm the boss, this is what I'm going to say that you have to do, which is never gonna work. Right. Now, did you always, I know you said you started as an entertainment company and then you kind of transitioned into the logistics side, but did you always imagine running your own company and kind of being no. the <laughs> side of things? Not at all, which is so crazy to me. Um, I honestly think uh, I, it's funny, my, my mom is an entrepreneur, she has her own business. Um, and my dad helps and like it's my grandmother was an entrepreneur my grandfather was and everyone's like oh it's in your blood you you definitely knew you were gonna do this and I swear to you not even like close to what I had ever imagined doing and had I not met my now business partner when I did which is about eight years ago now I don't think I ever would have gone this route and I have a lot of respect for people that do it on their own because I've always needed that support of someone to say we can do this we need to do this like the industry needs this and and you have something and and having that soundboard also to push me to do it honestly i think that's a huge part of why i ended up 
going out on our own and, and doing this as a as an entrepreneur. Um, I always say now, though, I'm sure you can feel you can relate. I can't imagine turning back, and I can't imagine doing anything differently. Just because I, I love I love the freedom to to create something, but also like, I have a team now, and I they're like my babies, and I feel so responsible for them because we're giving them an opportunity to do something that they love to do. And it's so different than maybe some of them who have jobs that they don't totally love. And the fact that we're responsible for giving people an opportunity to do something that they're excited about. I'm like literally a mama bear that just can't, I, I can't turn around. <laughs> I mean, it seems like it's in your blood from what I've seen just to run a company, not only because of the flexibility and the opportunity to give people that platform to do it on their own as well. But you just seem like someone who really enjoys like trying new things and having some control over the kind of clients you work with and all of that. I was going to ask you what you or why you would have not put this on the table. And is it, do you think it's just because you didn't trust that you could do it? And so you needed this partner to kind of like give you that push or like, what else did you think you were going to be doing? Yeah. I mean, it's a great question. And to be honest, I'll be, like really transparent, it was probably fear. Like I was yeah. like looking back, like I would, I would just be terrified of doing this on my own. Like why, you know, I, one of my kind of most memorable experiences to that pushed me to get into the events industry was an internship that led to a potential job with an amazing company in the city that I'm still friends with and I still talk to. And I loved what they were doing. And I just assumed that I would just keep going with different companies. You know, I worked for a nonprofit, didn't quite love the environment, but then I got to be on the other side. And, you know, I never thought about how are we getting business or where's, you know, where is that phone call going to come from to give me my next paycheck? Or, you know, I just, to me, it's, it's still terrifying. And I think that's like, you know, right before we got on this call, I was saying that there's this, this there's still this um, kind of challenge of, consistency right you know it's we're in wedding season right now so we're super busy with the actual events and detailing them and working with our clients and making sure we're available to them but we still have to have consistent sales coming in in order to maintain our business and having that balance you know i think especially when i was you know eight years ago or throughout this process had i not had someone to keep pushing and putting the fire under my butt to say we got this and we're going to keep figuring it out yeah, I think it comes out to fear. I, it was totally the same thing for me. I had been running the company on the side for a long time. Um, I think about, oh gosh, I think like five years on the side or four years or something, but I was wow. still working full time. And I just kept thinking like, oh, I have to make the transition at some point, but you have to wait till you hit a certain revenue and you have to like make sure you can you know, and I mean, granted, I was like young and single at the time. So really, I didn't have that many obligations. But still, it felt very risky to just make that jump and just hope it was going to work out. Um, and I feel like maybe for a lot of female entrepreneurs, maybe it's more than that. We need someone who can be like, no, you're being ridiculous. I it was, um, I think 2012. So what is that? Eight years ago today? Seven? About. Seven, seven, math, seven, like seven years ago? Seven, seven years ago. Today. I saw it on my Facebook memories that I had a like meeting with Ed, who at the time we were working together doing all this side at stuff Cheesecake. at Cheesecake Factory. I can remember the table we were sitting at when he was like, you're being ridiculous. You need to get out and just do this full time. And it was, it was a similar situation. Like unless someone told me that, and then I went home and told my parents and I mentioned it to my sister and they were like, yeah, of course. And I was like, wait, everyone thinks this. And I, I'm the only one who doesn't think this you need that extra person who can just kind of like push you off the ledge. And and that happens, I'm sure, not only in the beginning, but like you said, over and over again, when you're figuring it out. Oh, for like sure. <laughs> yeah. And it's so funny because my family was the same way. Like I remember calling my dad and being like, what do I do? And I had another job opportunity that was kind of more stable at the time. And he was like, just do it. You're young. Risk, you know, risks are easier now. It might as well. And what's even funnier uh, my business partner told me this recently, and he's a guy as well. So I think there's something to be said there about having two different personalities and perspectives. But he he met a gentleman recently who is like in his 70s or 80s and had been married for like 50 years. 
and he asked him, you know, what's, what's the secret? What's the secret to marriage for lasting that long? And the guy said, we never wanted to get divorced at the same time. And I sort of got, I had this like, and I was like, that's us. That is completely us. That's why we've been able to like maintain this company and, and keep it going. And we're always on the same page, but it's those moments where you have to have someone else that's pushing you because I mean, the amount of times I was literally just in tears of like, I don't know what we're doing and I don't know what my next move is, but I'm so glad that I had someone to push me because now again, like I, like, I love it. And I, I like, I love being able to do something that's exciting, but constantly changing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So how are you figuring it out? I know we all kind of figure out business ownership on our own. Um, I find it very interesting to kind of collect everyone's resources. And say, obviously, I'm sure it's a bit of mentorship. It's like the networking groups you're part of. Where are you going to like figure it out? Yeah. Um, so definitely part of it is my business partner. I give him a lot of credit. Um, he's a little bit older than I am and has gone through like different types of businesses and comes from a different background. So I give him a lot of credit. That being said, um, last year I went through the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business program, which was like a consolidated five month, almost like MBA program. And aside from the program itself, just being so, so worthwhile and so much education thrown at me, the people that I met in the group, we still meet on like a monthly basis and everyone is from a different industry and a different place in their career. And I look at them to an extent as mentors, but they're peers and we all come to the table with a different, different challenge or different experience and getting advice from them or being vulnerable and saying, I am struggling with X right now. Like we met last month. I remember we were going around the table and you know, whether it's struggling with being content that you're taking a break and you're not working, you know, like crazy for a week or, you know, struggling because you're having financial issues, just having a tribe of people that you feel comfortable enough to be vulnerable in front of that to me. And I've had that a few times, you know, like you said, I am part of a lot of networking groups and part of it was to build my network, but part of it was to build this tribe so that I don't feel alone. I mean, I don't know about you, but especially in the beginning of building this business, like there were times where I felt really alone, even though I'm in a people, I'm like in a person, like constantly surrounded by people in what I do, but I'm not always sharing what's happening on the back end. And, mm -hmm. you know, how are we meeting our numbers this month? Or um, how are we going to move forward and, and scale this company? Or, you know, what am I going to be doing in 20 years when I can't be working as hard, even though I love the events, but I can't be on site. Yeah. So finding that, finding that outlet to be vulnerable, you know, those are the ways that for me and, and reading books, I mean, I like not like the biggest on articles and books constantly, but when I do like right now, I'm reading the art of gathering by Priya Parker and I highly recommend it. It's just one of those things that you read and you're like, Oh my gosh, that's so smart. Or like, I never thought about things that way. Or like watching Sarah Blakely on Instagram, I heard her speak live and now like I follow her and she's just badass and like awesome. And for me, that's, you know, it's like someone that I would look up to and, and hope to be like. That's awesome. Now, one of the things I wanted to pick your brain about, because I know this happens um, in any business. Uh, one of the things I have been obsessed with is like different streams of revenue, recurring revenue. And we already talked a little bit about how, especially in the wedding business, there it's a very seasonal thing. Um, very, very busy and then not so busy. And of course, I know a lot of people think that the concept is you just make all your money and then you take off. <laughs> you just enjoy living off the fruits of that labor. I don't know how realistic that is. So how are you guys balancing the seasonality of your business and like just making sure, like you said, that the revenue is coming in every month and you have a business year round? Yeah, and I will say we're we're still trying to figure it out. Um, I think we we we've tried a lot of things. Some things work. Um, one of those things is you know just by the nature of what we do. So wedding coordination, um, we are able to do a lot more in a year than traditional wedding planning, right? So we do about forty to fifty weddings a year, and we have a team of planners that can take it on because we get involved in shorter timeframes. 
So that gives us kind of an interesting way to maintain business in a longer capacity where we're not only working on five projects a year. And, you know, for us, even if the weddings or the events are happening in, um, in March or in September, we have kind of a, a shorter lead time. So more business is coming in. But that being said, you know, right now we're trying to think about what are other ways that we can provide value to our partners or to the industry. And so one of the things that we've been doing, and we've kind of done this almost like naturally without it, without thinking about it as a business opportunity over the years, but we, we consult with venues because we work in so many venues. So because we do 40 to 50 weddings a year, plus all the other events, we're in a lot of spaces and we see how different spaces work. And so one of our value adds to, let's say a venue that's just opening brand new or one that's going through renovations and wants to revamp and maximize their event space, we have the opportunity to give them insight on what could work both logistically or kind of physically in terms of creating space that would bring them in more business, but also aesthetically, you know, creating floor plans before you even sit down with a client or explaining how to create partnerships with bus companies to help get guests to your venue or hotels or catering companies for revenue share. And so it's something that we've done kind of naturally, but now we're starting to create it as a leg of our business where we can help venues because it will help them do more, but it also help us create a relationship where they trust us and can bring us in once they're actually doing the events. So kind of two sides of it. Yeah. I feel like that's how the best um, revenue generating ideas come. The things that you're doing like naturally, and then you, and you realize people are keep coming to you asking you the same questions or whatever. And you're like, why don't we just charge for this? Yeah. <laughs> basically <laughs> like uh, i always tell people like i would love to say that i have some grand strategic business development plan it it just it doesn't work like that it's a lot of like provide value focus on that and good customer service and i feel like if you're tapped into the industry well enough you kind of know where the needs are you know you know Sure. The value that you can provide and where that would be helpful. And when those things start lining up, it's a new revenue stream. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, we've tried other things that didn't quite work out, which we thought were going to be business development yeah. strategies yeah. that would work. You know, we thought about, so we're based in New York, but we had started in New Jersey and we wanted to really push into Jersey as, as a really formal strategy, specifically with wedding coordination. And we, had a whole plan in place and, and invested money into certain things. And to be honest, it wasn't, not that it wasn't successful, but it wasn't where most of our profit was coming from or our revenue. And it wasn't kind of where our clientele was coming from. And so we realized, you know, after going through all that, that we'll still keep building that naturally, but maybe that's not where we put our focus and our money. And so, you know, it was a lesson learner and some money lost, but it was also, I think, if you learn something from it, then it's never a loss. It's always yeah. something to teach you to move forward. And, you know, I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure you know this too, of like, you just have to take it in stride and move forward and know that, you know, it happens and we're yeah. gonna be stronger from it. It's like a very stressful thing though, because running your own business is a very like personal thing. So when it doesn't work out, it feels like I failed, you know, it's, it's hard to find that balance between that feeling and then knowing in business, you have to fail a whole bunch of times. <laughs> There's lots of things you'll try that just don't work. Yeah, absolutely. And I was just saying, you know, we were talking about how, so we've had the business now for eight years and we've grown in so many ways. And last year was kind of a very transitional year for us. And at the end of the year, we had so many changes, which I, on a base level for me, just like emotionally, mentally were like taking three steps back like we got rid of our office and we we downsized our team and it was kind of this initial shock of like well technically if we're growing i feel like we should be going the opposite direction but once i got past what it should be and understood that this was actually helping us grow in the long term and seeing the effects of it in the last you know five months and how much stronger we've become as a company yeah. now i'm understanding more of the 
this makes sense and evolution happens for a reason and it may happen in different ways, but it's okay and I'm learning from it. So constantly that, that growth education, so to speak. I'm sure you've heard like in marriage, they say there's the seven year itch. And I yeah. feel like that is every business. It's like suddenly you start thinking, wait, I've been doing all this work, but if I could just change a few things, this could be better. Or, you know, it's definitely a time when a lot of people are like, okay, this is it. I'm done. <laughs> I just don't have the totally. passion anymore. I'm not making it work, whatever the reasons are. Um, and I think it's so, I don't know what it is about that seven year timeline. It was very much in line for me too. That's when I started really rethinking things. I'm like, okay, like you said, I don't necessarily want to be on site at every single event for the rest of my life, working until, you know, whatever time at night, waking up super early, being in, I hate wearing heels, as you know, so like just <laughs> dressing up period, like putting makeup on. I was like, no, totally. you know, but you have to, that period is so critical when you just start looking at things that you always looked at as success and you start thinking like, hmm, maybe that doesn't matter that much. But if I could change a few things, you know, you could really see your business grow and change. Well, and I feel like you must have gone through something like this with taxi talk and you know that coming to an end and it being like an end of a chapter and even for all of us that had like gone to it you know at first we're like what do you mean like how could you and if anything like each year was getting better and better but I'm sure that there was so much thought behind it and so much of you know I'm going into this next chapter and I have to put this to rest and I have to close the book on it but it's almost like what happens now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to like, uh, that was a time when I realized how much like what you're passionate about has to play into what you do because there is, there's like an op, there's the opportunity. Um, and then that has to pair though with like your love for it. And when we first started that event, I loved it so much. But then after 10 years of doing it, everyone in the industry was doing it. It was like, this is not, it's not cool and unique anymore. We just, back then it was because we were like one of the very few events that were doing something right. like that. And then, we, you know, it was, it was a hard, I will be honest. We, I decided at year seven, I think it's over. And it took me three more events to finally say, and to also convince right. the team, no, it's really over, <laughs> you know, but then you have to kind of say like, we've done what we can do here. There are other opportunities, but it's really hard to like just pull the plug on sponsorship money that's coming in every year and ticket sales were selling easier every year. It was like, what are we doing? But you have to love it. You know, when that's one of the opportunities we have in running our business is that we get to kind of pick and choose what we work on and do things that really excite us. Um, but it's very easy to get into a rut of just doing stuff because it makes money or because we've always done it. Um, yeah, that transition is hard, you know, like sharing the message about what you're doing now is like, you know, it's really difficult because people know you for one thing and, you know, <laughs> it's what it is. Yeah. And it's constantly, but I think, you know, if you're as confident and as excited about the next project, everyone's going to jump on board because they're just going to like, they're already excited to follow you in terms of like you have, you've grown your following and I feel like everyone that, you know, like I remember when you had your podcast and like anyone that talks to you, they're always like, I was so excited about when you did this or so excited when you did this. And they're just going to keep following in that, that excitement. And I think it's funny, like I, I kind of have this experience too. And I talk to people about like, even just like consulting venues. They're like, Oh my God, of course. Like you, you like, you throw out ideas left and right. Like why wouldn't that be a thing that you do? And I'm like, Oh really? Okay. I'm so glad that other people are catching on to this. Like I, it took I didn't realize it, but great. I'm glad there's a following. Yeah. I mean, you've done a really good job, not only with making a lot of relationships in the industry, but I think because you're a genuine person, you like to really make relationships, like actual relationships, not just meeting someone and selling something. <laughs> but because you are a genuine person, people want to follow your work and they want to do kind of whatever it is that you want to do. And that gives you so much flexibility then you can do stuff that you're really excited about and people are like, yeah, sure, whatever it is, we're in, which is amazing. It's exactly yeah, and what It's so about. funny because I honestly never thought I'd be doing weddings. Like I, I always joke, but truth, I would crash weddings in high school and I laughed at the idea of doing weddings, but I've grown to love of, of like the niche that we have 
Olympic aspect that I truly enjoy doing. That being said, one of the most gratifying things now and, and talking and just being yourself like I you know I, I love Instagram and I'm all about the stories even though I'm not on it as much as some people but some of the best compliments I've ever gotten in recent months have been from like mothers of brides who follow me on Instagram and I'll sit down for a first meeting with them and like before even signing them and they'll tell me how they follow me on Instagram and they were listening to me talk about some wedding I was doing and it looked like so much fun and I was so excited and they just want that energy at their at their kid's wedding. And to me, I'm like, really? Like, that's so bizarre. I, I would never think that, but at the same time, I'm so glad that you're relating and I'm glad that my, my personality and what I'm doing is matching a clientele that I want to be with you know like it, yeah. I, I like to have fun at my events too like my girls and I like we're always like dancing in the back when the party starts because it's fun and it should be so it's it, it's nice to see that being yourself as cliche as that is but being yourself and who you are and just kind of enhancing that for you know while you're learning how to run a business can actually give you a really really exciting lifestyle yeah that is um influence and thought leadership in practice right there. I and mean, when those women sit down with you, they already know they're gonna sign with you. There's not, yeah. it's not a sales conversation. <laughs> it's just, you're being who you are, they love who you are, they feel that vibe, they see it. But you're not talking directly to them when you post those Instagram posts. You're right. just sharing who you are. And by the time they sit down with you, they know this is who we're hiring and there's really no questions about it. So that's like the best when your clients are coming to you. The ideal clients are just coming right, right to you. And what flips it too, like if they if they don't work out because we don't match personalities, that's okay. Yeah. It, I mean, it's so much better for you in the long run <laughs> that you don't spend all your time working with clients that you don't like. Ah, we are already out of time, um, but you have shared such great information, not only about running your business and your career, but there's just been so many tidbits along the way. I feel like I could make a thousand little 30 second clips of wisdom <laughs> that you've shared. So thank One you day. so much for that. <laughs> um, how would people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about you and your niche and how you're building your business and all of that? Yeah, definitely. So um, Instagram for sure. Um, uh, you can follow me at my handle, Daniela.Grafman or our company, Vision Event Co. Um, definitely our website, visioneventco.com. Um, and I'm sure we'll share my email, but definitely very accessible via social media. I actually respond. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's nice once in a while. We'll be sure to put those links in the blog post where we have this video. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to all the people who are watching. Um, we will be back in, uh, we'll be back next week with another episode on Tuesday at 1030. And then we're skipping a week. Um, but we will be here every Tuesday at 1030 talking with more event hustlers like Daniela. So thanks for joining today. Thanks for having me.